Hi friends, I know I did this on Instagram Live once, but I didn't save it and I wanna put this on YouTube, so today I'm going to show you how we darken metal in our shop. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing this, but the way we do this makes it really easy and allows us to do a lot of stuff at the same time. So uh, we're going to be darkening some bottle openers and I'm gonna take you through the process we do. What's up guys? First off, you wanna have nice clean metal. So if you take a good look at this, it's very, very clean. There's no mill scale on here at all. And the way we got it to this stage is by soaking it in some concentrated vinegar for about two days, then washing it in some simple green and then giving it a very light wire wheeling. That took every bit of scale off. It is now very, very clean. However, it also took off all the oxide. We need that oxide pause due to, recon pause due to bad connection. Anyway, we need that oxide layer to be back on here. So we're going to heat them back up. This is the quick and dirty method. We're putting them in the forge for a little bit and then we'll pull them out. So I'll show you what we're doing. So I've got a couple of bottle openers. Again, they started out nice and clean, all the scale off. This was really easy to do by letting it soak in vinegar. And now they're in there. We want to pull them out because we want them to only be in there long enough to build up a little oxide. If we leave them in too long, they're going to build up too much scale. So I like to pull them out when they're just starting to glow. When the thinnest part starts to glow, you're ready to go. But I also want these to sit out here for a little bit. I want them to cool down. That's going to oxidize them. I don't want to put these in the oil when they're too hot. My rule is to never load this sucker back up. And I'm just running the forge at a very low temperature, as low as I can, letting these warm up nice and slowly. I've got the area with the most thermal mass deepest in the forge so that it warms up the most. And okay, so now that those are warming up and those are cooling down, what we're going to do is we're going to take these, uh, once they stop glowing, we're going to quench them in some oil. This oil is Parks 50 quenching oil. There's other things you could use but we're using Parks 50 quenching oil because I know it's safe to do. I just don't want them to be too hot because you'll get a big flare up, a big giant ball of fire. So we're gonna put them in here just to take the heat out. So we'll put these in here for just a little bit of time. And then we move them from here into a bucket that is mixed with beeswax, turpentine, and linseed oil. This is the magic secret special sauce. And the recipe for how we make this sauce is on our website in the blog section um, on exactly how we make that. But pull out whatever's in here first, the last batch. So this starts out as a bit of a paste, but we put these in hot enough that they melt their way down into the paste. Those ones might need reheated. I left them in there too long. So we grab one of these, it's no longer glowing, into the oil, all the way in, give it some twerks. Twerk it at least six times, you wanna back it up. You want to get low, right? Keep it in there for six quarts, and then into the beeswax. Again, in and twerk it. Get low. Now warm the bucks. Six quarts. We use quarts as a unit of time around here. That's how we measure time. Put it in and twerk it. Good twerks. There we go. Pull out now. Stay in there. Now the next thing we need to do, and it's really kind of the last step, is once these come out of the oil, they're still a little hot, we want to get that excess beeswax off. So I've got a terry cloth towel here, and I'm just giving them a good aggressive rub down. The important thing here is that I don't touch this. This is still hot enough to burn me. So I'm keeping this towel between me and the hot metal. But you can see that darkened it up, gave it a nice, nice little bit of a patina. Got a lot of wax left on this one. It wasn't hot enough when I put it in. We might have to just burn it off a little bit, but no problem. Uh, this also makes for a nice water resistant finish. It's not going to be waterproof, but basically what we're doing, same kind of way you'd uh, season a cast iron skillet. We basically opened the pores of the metal and allowed that oil to soak in and then cool down and form a nice even layer. And that's really kind of how we do it. It's not that hard. 